dear students today we are going to start with a new chapter that is congruency and the objectives of this chapter are number 1 meaning of congruency number 2 test of congruency number 3 applications of congruency of two triangles so today's video is going to be about the first two objectives of this chapter so let's get started so here we have first comparison of two figures the method of comparing two figures is known as the method of superposition right whenever we compare any two figures that method of comparing two figures is known as the superposition right now we have figures we have two type of figures first one is similar figures second one is congruent figures right so we will study about them one by one so here first of all we will talk about similar figures what are similar figures geometrical figures which have exactly same shape exactly same shape but not necessarily the same size are said to be similar figures now we have examples for similar figures that is pen pencils scales etc now we will understand this thing now students you can see here two pencils right so one pencil that is in color blue or sky blue and white and the other one is gray and black right so here here we have two pencils now you can see that this pencil is bigger than this pencil right so here what you have studied that these two pencils are of same shape right but their size is not same because this one is bigger in length and this one is smaller in length so their shape can be same but their size is not necessarily be same right so these type of figures are called the similar figures in the same way you can have many more examples like we can compare two pens two scales and many more right so these are the examples of similar figure now we will talk about congruent figure now what are congruent figures geometrical figures having exactly the same shape and size are known as congruent figures so he, we, here we have some examples for congruent figures that is coins as well as hands now we will understand this how can we say that coins and hands are congruent so here you can see now here student you can see i have taken here two coins of 1 1 rupee right now what if i will keep this coin on this coin right so in this way i have to keep this coin on the first coin and what will happen you can see if these two coins can completely superimpose each other that mean they can cover each other completely then these two coins are said to be congruent right now you can see that these two coins are same in shape as well as in size that is why they can completely cover each other right so these are said to be congruent now next example we will see now student you can see my hand over here now this one is my left hand now this one is my right hand now all you know that our two hands are of same shape as well as same size right now what if i will join my two hands like this from both side you can see they can cover each other completely right so now if my two hands can completely cover each other or completely superimpose each other then these two hands or these two shapes are said to be congruent right because our hands are of same shape as well as same size right so here we have these two examples so we can see that the coins and the hands are the easiest example for understanding two congruent figures 
Now we will talk about the symbols for representing similar figures and for congruent figures. So here we have this symbol which we will use for comparing two similar figures and this figure we will use this symbol we will use for comparing two congruent figures, right? Next is how can we read it? We can read this symbol as is similar to, right? And this symbol we can read it as is congruent to, clear? Now students, we will study about the congruency that how can two lines or two angles or two triangles can be congruent, right? So we will talk about them one by one. Now here, first of all, we will have congruency of two lines. Now when we will say that two lines are said to be congruent, the two lines are congruent when they have the same length, right? So here we can say that we have taken uh, two line segments like AB and CD and you can see the length of these two line segments are same. So these lines are said to be congruent because both these are of same length that is equal to 7 cm. Next is congruency of angles. When we say that two angles are congruent, angles having the same measures are congruent to each other. Here you can see that angle ABC and angle EFG. Here angle B is 60, again here F angle is 60. So these two angles are same. So here we can see that these two angles are said to be congruent, right? Now, we will talk about the congruency of triangles. Now, two triangles are congruent if the following coincide with each other when superimposed. Now, which three things we have to keep it in our mind for congruency of triangle now first of all you can see the two figures we have taken here two triangles so let us suppose this bc side is eight centimeter this ac is six centimeter and this is five centimeter right now this ef is five centimeter this eg is six centimeter and this one is eight centimeter now you can see that this triangle is the first triangle and this one is the second that is triangle abc and triangle efg clear now, first of all, you can see the corresponding vertices. Corresponding vertices means if this one is A and its corresponding vertices in this triangle, that will be E. And here it will be B and here F and in this triangle, ABC triangle, it will be C and here G, right? Now, corresponding sides of the triangle. Now, first triangle is this. If I'm taking this AB side, so, what will be the corresponding side of the other triangle? It would, it would be the same length of the side. That will be 5 cm EF. So, the corresponding side of this triangle to this triangle, it will be AB and EF, which are of same length. Similarly, AC and EG, because these are of same length 6 cm. Similarly, BC is equal to FG, because both these lengths are equal. So, here we have the corresponding sides. Next is corresponding angles. Now we will talk about the angles. Now you can see here angle 1 and the corresponding angle will also be here angle 1, right? Similarly, if I am taking here angle 2 and here also angle 2 and here if we are taking angle 3, here also will be the angle 3 will be corresponding angle. Clear? So, next we are having the corresponding sides, corresponding angles, as well as the corresponding vertices. What we are exactly talking about these triangles? We are talking about the corresponding parts of the triangles, right? So, these all are called the corresponding parts of the triangle, right? So, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are always equal, right? So, here we have another name for corresponding parts of congruent triangle that is C, P, C, T, C, right? So here you can see C, P, C, T, C means corresponding parts of congruent triangle, right? So all these are the corresponding parts of these congruent triangle. If we uh, will prove that these two triangles are congruent, then their corresponding parts, that means their angles as well as their side should be equal. 
and they should also be congruent right now students we will have some conditions some tests that we will use for proving the congruency of two triangles so we will study about them one by one first of all sss that means side 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 so here you can see triangle abc i have taken and here x y z now here you can see this one line and here again one line that means these two sides are equal that is ab is equals to xy similarly here these two lines you can see that means bc is equals to yz and here three lines you can see here that means ac is equals to xz and all these three sides are equal to each other so here we can apply the sss test that means side 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 are equal next is SAS that means side angle side now again we are taking here triangle ABC and here XYZ now here if AB side is equals to XY this will be side so here we are using side AB is equals to XY now next is angle after side we are looking for angle right so here angle B is there and here angle Y so angle B is equals to angle Y right so next we have chosen angle next one is side so here you can see bc is equals to yz so first of all we have taken side then angle then side so this test will be sas that is side angle side now next is asa asa means angle side angle right now again if we will take two triangles like abc and xyz now here if I am taking here angle B, which will be equals to angle Y, right? Next is I am taking this side, that is BC, which is equals to side YZ. Next is angle C will be equals to angle Z. Now what we are taking angle side angle. So that means from these two triangles, we can say that this test we can apply that is angle side angle. Clear? Now next one is angle angle side that is aas now here you can see i have taken here triangle p q r and here m and p now if i'm taking angle p is equals to angle m then angle q is equals to angle n and then angle these two sides q r is equals to n p if these two sides are equal now which test we can apply here that is angle angle side that is aas right next one is rhs r means right angle h means hypotenuse and s means side now here right angle means we have to make the right angle triangle the triangle should be right angle triangle in which one angle should be 90 degree right so here you can see right angles so angle b will be equal to angle q because both these angles are of 90 degree next hypotenuse opposite to 90 degree always there is a side which is known as hypotenuse so opposite to 90 degree here we have ac and here we have pr so ac should be equals to pr right the next any side should be equal so either bc is equals to qr or ab is equals to pq right so here we are given with bc is equals to qr so here we can apply rhs that means right angle hypotenuse side test clear now student we will learn about how can we find or identify that which test we can apply on both on two given triangles so let's have some examples now here we have statement state the condition sss or sas or asa or rhs under which Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle PQR in each of the following cases. Now, students, we have to identify that which rule out of these we can apply on these two given triangles for uh, telling them that these two triangles are congruent, right? So, first of all, we will have these two first triangle that is triangle ABC and triangle PQR. Now here you can see that here AB is equal to 4.5 centimeter and PQ is also 4.5 centimeter, right? So that means these two sides are equal. Next BC is equal to 5 centimeter again, QR is equal to 5 centimeter. That means these two sides are equal. So again, 
we have taken two sides that are equal. Next is AC is equal to 4.5 centimeter. Again, we have PR equals to 4.5 centimeter. Now, again, we have taken the sides which are equal. So now we can apply here which test that is SSS test because we have taken the sides which are equal, right? So here we can see that by SS test, SSS test that is side, side, side test, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle PQ. R, right next we will have again the same triangle that is triangle ABC and triangle PQR right but here one difference is there that we have taken here right angle triangle right now here you can see one angle is right angle in both cases clear so each 90 degree next one is opposite to 90 degree there should be hypotenuse which are equal AC is equal to PR or RP. Next is BC is equals to RQ. So here clearly we can apply RHS that is right angle. One right angle we have taken. Hypotenuse we have taken which are equal and side that is BC is equals to RQ. Clear? Next we will have triangle ABC again and PQR. Right? Now in this case you can see angle B here that is 60 degree and angle Q is here which is 60 degree. So both these angles are equal right now next one is this side bc is equals to side qr right next is angle c is 50 degree so angle r is also 50 degree so both these angles are equal now which test we can apply here that is angle side angle so we will write here asa clear next we will have the fourth example in which again we have taken two right angles right now students it's not necessary that if we are taking right angles so there we will definitely apply rhs no we will not apply every time rhs because for rhs we need right angle hypotenuse and side so here we have first right angle we are taking here right each 90 degrees so here we have r but opposite to 90 degree there should be hypotenuse which is not given to us that means we can't apply here RHS, right? Now here each 90 degree one angle is there. Now here side you can see AB is equals to PQ, right? AB is equals to PQ. Next angle one that is B equals to angle Q. And then side BC is equals to side QR. So here we can apply side angle and side. So that is SAS, right? So students in this way, Today we have learned about the congruency and the different criteria of congruency, right? Also we have studied about how can we identify that which test we can apply on for two triangles for comparing or for finding that whether the two given triangles are congruent or not, right? So students, I hope all of you have understood this completely. Now, all of you are able to do the related homework that we have sent you in your SNAP homework. Thank you.